Paris, is the capital and most populous city of France, with an estimated population of 2,165,423 residents in 2019 in an area of more than 105 square kilometers. Since the 17th century, Paris has been one of the world's major centers of finance, diplomacy, commerce, fashion, gastronomy, science, and arts. The city of Paris is the center and seat of government of the region and province of Ile de France, or Paris region, with an estimated population of 12,174,880 in 2017, or about 18% of the population of France. The Paris region had a GDP of €709 billion Euros in 2017. According to the Economist Intelligence Unit Worldwide Cost of Living Survey in 2018, Paris was the second most expensive city in the world, after Singapore and ahead of Zurich, Hong Kong, Oslo, and Geneva. Another source ranked Paris as most expensive, on par with Singapore and Hong Kong, in 2018. Paris is a major railway, highway, and air transport hub served by two international airports, Paris Charles de Gaulle and Paris Orly. Opened in 1900, the city's subway system, the Paris Metro, serves 5.23 million passengers daily, it is the second busiest metro system in Europe after the Moscow Metro. Gare du Nord is the 24th busiest railway station in the world, but the busiest located outside Japan, with 262 million passengers in 2015. Paris is especially known for its museums and architectural landmarks, the Louvre received 2.8 million visitors in 2021, despite the long museum closings caused by the COVID-19 virus. The Musée d'Orsay, Musée Marmiton Monet and Musée de l'Orangerie are noted for their collections of French Impressionist art. The Pompidou Centre Musée National d'Art Moderne has the largest collection of modern and contemporary art in Europe. The Musée Rodin and Musée Picasso exhibit the works of two noted Parisians. The historical district along the Seine in the city centre has been classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1991. Popular landmarks there include the Cathedral of Notre Dame de Paris on the Ile de la Site, now closed for renovation after the 15th of April 2019 fire. Other popular tourist sites include the Gothic Royal Chapel of Saint Chapelle, also on the Ile de la Site, the Eiffel Tower, constructed for the Paris Universal Exposition of 1889 the Grand Palais and Petit Palais, built for the Paris Universal Exposition of 1900, the Arc de Triomphe on the Champs-Élysées, and the Hill of Montmartre with its artistic history and its Basilica of Sacré-Cœur. Paris received 12.6 million visitors in 2020, measured by hotel stays, a drop of 73% from 2019, due to the COVID-19 virus. The number of foreign visitors declined by 80.7%. Museums reopened in 2021, with limitations on the number of visitors at a time and a requirement that visitors wear masks. The football club Paris Saint-Germain and the rugby union club Stade de France are based in Paris. The 80,000-seat Stade de France, built for the 1998 FIFA World Cup, is located just north of Paris in the neighboring commune of Saint-Denis. Paris hosts the annual French Open Grand Slam tennis tournament on the red clay of Roland Garros. The city hosted the Olympic Games in 1900, 1924 and will host the 2024 Summer Olympics. The 1938 and 1998 FIFA World Cups, the 2007 Rugby World Cup, as well as the 1960, 1984 and 2016 UEFA European Championships were also held in the city. Every July, the Tour de France bicycle race finishes on the Avenue des Champs-Élysées in Paris. Chapter 1. Etymology The ancient epidome that corresponds to the modern city of Paris was first mentioned in the mid-first century BC by Julius Caesar as Lutetium Parisiorum, and is later attested as Parisian in the 5th century AD, then as Paris in 1265. During the Roman period, it was commonly known as Lutetia or Lutetia in Latin, and as Leucotechia in Greek, which is interpreted as either stemming from the Celtic root Leucot, or from Luto, 
depending on whether the Latin or Greek form is the closest to the original Gaulish name. The name Paris is derived from its early inhabitants, the Parisi, a Gallic tribe from the Iron Age and the Roman period. The meaning of the Gaulish ethnonym remains debated. According to Xavier de Lamar, it may derive from the Celtic root pario. Alfred Holder interpreted the name as the makers or the commanders, by comparing it to the Welsh perif, both possibly descending from a proto-Celtic form reconstructed as quor is io. Alternatively, Pierre-Yves Lambert proposed to, to translate Parisi as the spear people, by connecting the first element to the old Irish car, derived from an earlier corsar. In any case, the city's name is not related to the Paris of Greek mythology. Paris is often referred to as the City of Light, both because of its leading role during the Age of Enlightenment and more literally because Paris was one of the first large European cities to use gas street lighting on a grand scale on its boulevards and monuments. Gas lights were installed on the Place du Carousel, Rue de Rivoli and Place Vendôme in 1829. By 1857, the Grand Boulevards were lit. By the 1860s, the boulevards and streets of Paris were illuminated by 56,000 gas lamps. Since the late 19th century, Paris has also been known as Pan Am, in French slang. Inhabitants are known in English as Parisians and in French as Paisian. They are also pejoratively called Parigots. Chapter 2 History Chapter 2 Section 1 Origins The Parisi, a subtribe of the Celtic Senones, inhabited the Paris area from around the middle of the 3rd century BC. One of the area's major north-south trade routes crossed the Seine on the Ile de la Site, this meeting place of land and water trade routes gradually became an important trading center. The Parisi traded with many river towns and minted their own coins for that purpose. The Romans conquered the Paris Basin in 52 BC, and began their settlement on Paris's left bank. The Roman town was originally called Lutetia. It became a prosperous city with a forum, baths, temples, theatres, and an amphitheatre. By the end of the Western Roman Empire, the town was known as Parisius, a Latin name that would later become Paris in French. Christianity was introduced in the middle of the 3rd century AD by Saint Denis, the first bishop of Paris, according to legend, when he refused to renounce his faith before the Roman occupiers, he was beheaded on the hill which became known as Mons Martyrum, later Montmartre, from where he walked headless to the north of the city, the place where he fell and was buried became an important religious shrine, the Basilica of Saint-Denis, and many French kings are buried there. Clovis the Frank, the first king of the Merovingian dynasty, made the city his capital from 508. As the Frankish domination of Gaul began, there was a gradual immigration by the Franks to Paris and the Parisian Francian dialects were born. Fortification of the Ile de la Site failed to avert sacking by Vikings in 845, but Paris's strategic importance, with its bridges preventing ships from passing, was established by successful defence in the siege of Paris, for which the then Count of Paris, Otto of France, was elected King of West Francia. From the Capetian dynasty that began with the 987 election of Hugh Coppet, Count of Paris and Duke of the Franks, as King of a unified Francia, Paris gradually became the largest and most prosperous city in France. Chapter 2 Section 2 High and Late Middle Ages to Louis XIV By the end of the 12th century, Paris had become the political, economic, religious, and cultural capital of France. The Palais de la Site, the royal residence, was located at the western end of the Ile de la Site. In 1163, during the reign of Louis VII, Maurice de Sully, Bishop of Paris, undertook the construction of the Notre Dame Cathedral at its eastern extremity. After the marshland between the River Seine and its slower dead arm to its north was filled in from around the 10th century, Paris's cultural centre began to move to the right bank. In 1137, a new city marketplace replaced the two smaller ones on the Ile de la Site and Place de Greve. The latter location housed the headquarters of Paris's River Trade Corporation, an organization that later became, unofficially, Paris's first municipal government. 
In the late 12th century, Philip Augustus extended the Louvre fortress to defend the city against river invasions from the west, gave the city its first walls between 1190 and 1215, rebuilt its bridges to either side of its central island, and paved its main thoroughfares. In 1190, he transformed Paris's former cathedral school into a student-teacher corporation that would become the University of Paris and would draw students from all of Europe. With 200,000 inhabitants in 1328, Paris, then already the capital of France, was the most populous city of Europe. By comparison, London in 1300 had 80,000 inhabitants. During the Hundred Years' War, Paris was occupied by England-friendly Burgundian forces from 1418, before being occupied outright by the English when Henry V of England entered the French capital in 1420, in spite of a 1429 effort by Joan of Arc to liberate the city, it would remain under English occupation until 1436. In the late 16th century French wars of religion, Paris was a stronghold of the Catholic League, the organizers of the 24th of August 1572 St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre in which thousands of French Protestants were killed. The conflicts ended when pretender to the throne Henry IV, after converting to Catholicism to gain entry to the capital, entered the city in 1594 to claim the crown of France. This king made several improvements to the capital during his reign, he completed the construction of Paris's first uncovered, sidewalk-lined bridge, the Pont Neuf, built a Louvre extension connecting it to the Tuileries Palace, and created the first Paris residential square, the Place Royale, now Place des Vosges. In spite of Henry IV's efforts to improve city circulation, the narrowness of Paris's streets was a contributing factor in his assassination near Lael Marketplace in 1610. During the 17th century, Cardinal Richelieu, chief minister of Louis XIII, was determined to make Paris the most beautiful city in Europe. He built five new bridges, a new chapel for the College of Sorbonne, and a palace for himself, the Palais Cardinal, which he bequeathed to Louis XIII. After Richelieu's death in 1642, it was renamed the Palais Royal. Due to the Parisian uprisings during the Fronde Civil War, Louis XIV moved his court to a new palace, Versailles, in 1682. Although no longer the capital of France, arts and sciences in the city flourished with the Comédie Française, the Academy of Painting, and the French Academy of Sciences. To demonstrate that the city was safe from attack, the king had the city walls demolished and replaced with tree-lined boulevards that would become the Grands Boulevards of today. Other marks of his reign were the College des Quatre Nations, the Place Vendôme, the Place des Victoires, and Les Invalides. Chapter 2 Section 3, 18th and 19th Centuries Paris grew in population from about 400,000 in 1640 to 650,000 in 1780. A new boulevard, the Champs-Élysées, extended the city west to Etoile, while the working-class neighborhood of the Faubourg Saint-Antoine on the eastern site of the city grew more and more crowded with poor migrant workers from other regions of France. Paris was the center of an explosion of philosophic and scientific activity known as the Age of Enlightenment. Diderot and d'Alembert published their Encyclopédie in 1751, and the Montcolfier brothers launched the first manned flight in a hot air balloon on 21 November 1783, from the gardens of the Château de la Mouette. Paris was the financial capital of continental Europe, the primary European center of book publishing and fashion and the manufacture of fine furniture and luxury goods. In the summer of 1789, Paris became the center stage for the French Revolution. On the 14th of July, a mob seized the arsenal at the Invalides, acquiring thousands of guns, and stormed the Bastille, a symbol of royal authority. The first independent Paris Commune, or City Council, met in the Hôtel de Ville and, on 15 July, elected a mayor, the astronomer Jean Sylvain Bally. Louis XVI and the royal family were brought to Paris and made prisoners within the Tuileries Palace. In 1793, as the revolution turned more and more radical, the king, queen, and the mayor were guillotined in the reign of terror, along with more than 16,000 others throughout France. The property of the aristocracy, and the church was nationalized, 
and the city's churches were closed, sold or demolished. A succession of revolutionary factions ruled Paris until the 9th of November 1799, when Napoleon Bonaparte seized power as first consul. The population of Paris had dropped by 100,000 during the revolution, but between 1799 and 1815, it surged with 160,000 new residents, reaching 660,000. Napoleon Bonaparte replaced the elected government of Paris with a prefect reporting only to him. He began erecting monuments to military glory, including the Arc de Triomphe, and improved the neglected infrastructure of the city with new fountains, the Canal de Loque, Père Lachaise Cemetery and the city's first metal bridge, the Pont des Arts. During the Restoration, the bridges and squares of Paris were returned to their pre-revolution names, the July Revolution in 1830 brought a constitutional monarch, Louis-Philippe I, to power. The first railway line to Paris opened in 1837, beginning a new period of massive migration from the provinces to the city. Louis-Philippe was overthrown by a popular uprising in the streets of Paris in 1848. His successor, Napoleon III, alongside the newly appointed prefect of the Seine, Georges Eugène Osman, launched a gigantic public works project to build wide new boulevards, a new opera house, a central market, new aqueducts, sewers and parks, including the Bois de Boulogne and Bois de Vincennes. In 1860, Napoleon III also annexed the surrounding towns and created eight new arrondissements, expanding Paris to its current limits. During the Franco-Prussian War, Paris was besieged by the Prussian army. After months of blockade, hunger, and then bombardment by the Prussians, the city was forced to surrender on 28 January 1871. On 28 March, a revolutionary government called the Paris Commune seized power in Paris. The Commune held power for two months, until it was harshly suppressed by the French army during the bloody week at the end of May 1871. Late in the 19th century, Paris hosted two major international expositions, the 1889 Universal Exposition, was held to mark the centennial of the French Revolution and featured the new Eiffel Tower, and the 1900 Universal Exposition, which gave Paris the Pont Alexandre III, the Grand Palais, the Petit Palais and the first Paris metro line. Paris became the laboratory of naturalism and symbolism, and of impressionism in art. Chapter 2 Section 4 20th and 21st centuries. By 1901, the population of Paris had grown to about 2,715,000. At the beginning of the century, artists from around the world including Pablo Picasso, Modigliani, and Henri Matisse made Paris their home. It was the birthplace of Fauvism, Cubism, and abstract art, and authors such as Marcel Proust were exploring new approaches to literature. During the First World War, Paris sometimes found itself on the front line. 600 to 1,000 Paris taxis played a small but highly important symbolic role in transporting 6,000 soldiers to the front line at the First Battle of the Marne. The city was also bombed by zeppelins and shelled by German long range guns. In the years after the war, known as Les Années Folles, Paris continued to be a mecca for writers, musicians and artists from around the world, including Ernest Hemingway, Igor Stravinsky, James Joyce, Josephine Baker, Eva Kocheva, Henry Miller, Anais Nine Inch Nails, Sidney Bechet Allen Ginsberg and the surrealist Salvador Dali. In the years after the peace conference, the city was also home to growing numbers of students and activists from French colonies and other Asian and African countries who later became leaders of their countries, such as Ho Chi Minh, Zhou Enlai, and Leopold Cedar Senghor. On 14 June 1940, the German army marched into Paris, which had been declared an open city. On 16-17 July 1942, following German orders, the French police and gendarmes arrested 12,884 Jews, including 4,115 children, and confined them during five days at the Vel DHIV, from which they were transported by train to the extermination camp at Auschwitz. None of the children came back. On 25 August 1944, 
the city was liberated by the French 2nd Armored Division and the 4th Infantry Division of the United States Army. General Charles de Gaulle led a huge and emotional crowd down the Champs-Élysées towards Notre Dame de Paris, and made a rousing speech from the Hotel de Ville. In the 1950s and the 1960s, Paris became one front of the Algerian War for Independence. In August 1961, the pro independence FLN targeted and killed 11 Paris policemen, leading to the imposition of a curfew on Muslims of Algeria. On 17 October 1961, an unauthorized but peaceful protest, demonstration of Algerians against the curfew led to violent confrontations between the police and demonstrators, in which at least 40 people were killed, including some thrown into the Seine. The anti-independence organization Armée Secrète, for their part, carried out a series of bombings in Paris throughout 1961 and 1962. In May 1968, protesting students occupied the Sorbonne and put up barricades in the Latin Quarter. Thousands of Parisian blue-collar workers joined the students, and the movement grew into a two-week general strike. Supporters of the government won the June elections by a large majority. The May 1968 events in France resulted in the breakup of the University of Paris into 13 independent campuses. In 1975, the National Assembly changed the status of Paris to that of other French cities and, on 25 March 1977, Jacques Chirac became the first elected mayor of Paris since 1793. The Tourmain Montparnasse, the tallest building in the city at 57 stories and 210 meters high, was built between 1969 and 1973. It was highly controversial, and it remains the only building in the center of the city over 32 stories high. The population of Paris dropped from 2,850,000 in 1954 to 2,152,000 in 1990, as middle-class families moved to the suburbs. A suburban railway network, the RA, was built to complement the metro, the peripheric expressway encircling the city, was completed in 1973. Most of the post war's presidents of the Fifth Republic wanted to leave their own monuments in Paris. President Georges Pompidou started the Centre Georges Pompidou, Valery Giscard d'Estaing began the Musée d'Orsay, President Francois Mitterrand, in power for 14 years, built the Opera Bastille, the new site of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France the Arche de la Défense, and the Louvre Pyramid with its underground courtyard, Jacques Chirac, the Musée du Quai Branly. In the early 21st century, the population of Paris began to increase slowly again, as more young people moved into the city. It reached 2.25 million in 2011. In March 2001, Bertrand Delonaway became the first socialist mayor of Paris. In 2007, in an effort to reduce car traffic in the city, he introduced the Valib, a system which rents bicycles for the use of local residents and visitors. Bertrand Delonaway also transformed a section of the highway along the left bank of the Seine into an urban promenade and park, the Promenade des Burges de la Seine, which he inaugurated in June 2013. In 2007, President Nicolas Sarkozy launched the Grand Paris Project to integrate Paris more closely with the towns in the region around it. After many modifications, the new area, named the Metropolis of Grand Paris, with a population of 6.7 million, was created on 1 January 2016. In 2011, the City of Paris and the national government approved the plans for the Grand Paris Express, totaling 205 kilometers of automated metro lines to connect Paris, the innermost three departments around Paris, airports and high-speed rail stations, at an estimated cost of 35 billion euros. The system is scheduled to be completed by 2030. In January 2015, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula claimed attacks across the Paris region. 1.5 million people marched in Paris in a show of solidarity against terrorism, and in support of freedom of speech. In November of the same year, terrorist attacks, claimed by Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, killed 130 people and injured more than 350. Chapter 3, Geography Chapter 3 Section 1, Location 
Paris is located in northern central France, in a north-bending arc of the River Seine whose crest includes two islands, the Ile Saint-Louis and the larger Ile de la Cite, which form the oldest part of the city. The river's mouth on the English Channel is about 233 miles downstream from the city. The city is spread widely on both banks of the river. Overall, the city is relatively flat, and the lowest point is 35 meters above sea level. Paris has several prominent hills, the highest of which is Montmartre at 130 meters. Excluding the outlying parks of Bois de Boulogne and Bois de Vincennes, Paris covers an oval measuring about 87 square kilometers in area, enclosed by the 35 kilometers ring road, the Boulevard Peripherique. The city's last major annexation of outlying territories in 1860 not only gave it its modern form, but also created the 20 clockwise, spiraling arrondissements. From the 1860 area of 78 square kilometers, the city limits were expanded marginally to 86.9 square kilometers in the 1920s. In 1929, the Bois de Boulogne and Bois de Vincennes forest parks were officially annexed to the city, bringing its area to about 105 square kilometers. The metropolitan area of the city is 2,300 square kilometers. Measured from the point zero in front of its Notre Dame Cathedral, Paris by road is 450 kilometers southeast of London, 287 kilometers south of Calais, 305 kilometers southwest of Brussels, 774 kilometers north of Marseille, 385 kilometers northeast of Nantes, and 135 kilometers southeast of Rouen. Chapter 3 Section 2 Climate Paris has a typical Western European oceanic climate, which is affected by the North Atlantic current. The overall climate throughout the year is mild and moderately wet. Summer days are usually warm and pleasant with average temperatures between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius, and a fair amount of sunshine. Each year, however, there are a few days when the temperature rises above 32 degrees Celsius. Longer periods of more intense heat sometimes occur, such as the heat wave of 2003 when temperatures exceeded 30 degrees Celsius for weeks, reached 40 degrees Celsius on some days and rarely cooled down at night. Spring and autumn have, on average, mild days and fresh nights but are changing and unstable. Surprisingly warm or cool weather occurs frequently in both seasons. In winter, sunshine is scarce, days are cool, and nights are cold but generally above freezing with low temperatures around 3 degrees Celsius. Light night frosts are however quite common, but the temperature seldom dips below minus 5 degrees Celsius. Snow falls every year, but rarely stays on the ground. The city sometimes sees light snow or flurries with or without accumulation. Paris has an average annual precipitation of 641 mm, and experiences light rainfall distributed evenly throughout the year. However, the city is known for intermittent, abrupt, heavy showers. The highest recorded temperature was 42.6 degrees Celsius on 25 July 2019, and the lowest was minus 23.9 degrees Celsius on 10 December 1879. Chapter 4, Administration Chapter 4 Section 1, City Government For almost all of its long history, except for a few brief periods, Paris was governed directly by representatives of the King, Emperor, or President of France. The city was not granted municipal autonomy by the National Assembly until 1974. For all but 14 months from 1794 to 1977, Paris was the only French commune without a mayor, and thus had less autonomy than the smallest village. For most of the time from 1800 to 1977, it was directly controlled by the departmental prefect. The first modern elected mayor of Paris was Jacques Chirac, elected 20 March 1977, becoming the city's first mayor since 1871, and only the fourth since 1794. The current mayor is Anne Hidalgo, a socialist, 
first elected the 5th of April 2014 and re-elected the 28th of June 2020. The mayor of Paris is elected indirectly by Paris voters. The voters of each of the city's 20 arrondissements elect members to the Conseil de Paris, which subsequently elects the mayor. The council is composed of 163 members, with each arrondissement allocated a number of seats dependent upon its population, from 10 members for each of the least populated arrondissements to 34 members for the most populated. The council is elected using closed list proportional representation in a two round system. Party lists winning an absolute majority in the first round, or at least a plurality in the second round, automatically win half the seats of an arrondissement. The remaining half of seats are distributed proportionally to all lists which win at least 5% of the vote using the highest averages method. This ensures that the winning party or coalition always wins a majority of the seats, even if they don't win an absolute majority of the vote. Once elected, the council plays a largely passive role in the city government, primarily because it meets only once a month. The council is divided between a coalition of the left of 91 members, including the Socialists, Communists, Greens, and Extreme Left, and 71 members for the centre-right, plus a few members from smaller parties. Each of Paris's 20 arrondissements has its own town hall and a directly elected council, which, in turn, elects an arrondissement mayor. The council of each arrondissement is composed of members of the Conseil de Paris and also members who serve only on the council of the arrondissement. The number of deputy mayors in each arrondissement varies depending upon its population. There are a total of 20 arrondissement mayors and 120 deputy mayors. The budget of the city for 2018 is 9.5 billion euros, with an expected deficit of 5.5 billion euros. 7.9 billion euros are designated for city administration, and 1.7 billion euros for investment. The number of city employees increased from 40,000 in 2001 to 55,000 in 2018. The largest part of the investment budget is earmarked for public housing, and for real estate. Chapter 4 Section 2, Metropole du Grand Paris The Metropole du Grand Paris, or simply Grand Paris, formally came into existence on 1 January 2016. It is an administrative structure for cooperation between the city of Paris and its nearest suburbs. It includes the city of Paris, plus the communes of the three departments of the inner suburbs, plus seven communes in the outer suburbs, including Argentoy in Val d'Oise and Paravier Poste in the Somme, which were added to include the major airports of Paris. The metropole covers 814 square kilometers, and has a population of 6.945 million persons. The new structure is administered by a metropolitan council of 210 members, not directly elected, but chosen by the councils of the member communes. By 2020 its basic competencies will include urban planning, housing and protection of the environment. The first president of the Metropolitan Council, Patrick Ollier, a Republican and the mayor of the town of Roy Malmaison, was elected on the 22nd of January 2016. Though the metropole has a population of nearly 7 million people and accounts for 25% of the GDP of France, it has a very small budget, just 65 million euros, compared with 8 billion euros for the city of Paris. Chapter 4 Section 3, Regional Government The region of Ile-de-France, including Paris and its surrounding communities, is governed by the Regional Council, which has its headquarters in the 7th arrondissement of Paris. It is composed of 209 members representing the different communes within the region. On 15 December 2015, a list of candidates of the Union of the Right, a coalition of centrist and right-wing parties, led by Valérie Picresse, narrowly won the regional election, defeating a coalition of socialists and ecologists. The socialists had governed the region for 17 years. The regional council has 121 members from the Union of the Right, 66 from the Union of the Left and 22 from the Extreme Right National Front. Chapter 4 Section 4, National Government As the capital of France, Paris is the seat of France's national government. 
For the executive, the two chief officers each have their own official residences, which also serve as their offices. The President of the French Republic resides at the Élysée Palace in the 8th arrondissement, while the Prime Minister's seat is at the Hotel Matignon in the 7th arrondissement. Government ministries are located in various parts of the city, many are located in the 7th arrondissement, near the Hotel Matignon. Both houses of the French Parliament are located on the Rive Gauche. The Upper House, the Senate, meets in the Palais du Luxembourg in the 6th arrondissement, while the more important lower house, the National Assembly, meets in the Palais Bourbon in the 7th arrondissement. The President of the Senate, the second highest public official in France, resides in the Petit Luxembourg, a smaller palace annexed to the Palais du Luxembourg. France's highest courts are located in Paris. The Court of Cassation, the highest court in the judicial order, which reviews criminal and civil cases, is located in the Palais de Justice on the Ile de la Cite, while the Conseil d'État, which provides legal advice to the executive and acts as the highest court in the administrative order, judging litigation against public bodies, is located in the Palais Royal in the 1st arrondissement. The Constitutional Council, an advisory body with ultimate authority on the constitutionality of laws and government decrees, also meets in the Montpensier wing of the Palais Royal. Paris and its region host the headquarters of several international organizations, including UNESCO, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the International Chamber of Commerce, the Paris Club, the European Space Agency, the International Energy Agency, the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, the European Union Institute for Security Studies, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, the International Exhibition Bureau, and the International Federation for Human Rights. Following the motto only Paris is worthy of Rome, only Rome is worthy of Paris, the only sister city of Paris is Rome, although Paris has partnership agreements with many other cities around the world. Chapter 4 Section 5, Police Force The security of Paris is mainly the responsibility of the Prefecture of Police of Paris, a subdivision of the Ministry of the Interior. It supervises the units of the National Police who patrol the city and the three neighboring departments. It is also responsible for providing emergency services, including the Paris Fire Brigade. Its headquarters is on Place Louis Lapine on the Ile de la Cite. There are 30,200 officers under the prefecture, and a fleet of more than 6,000 vehicles, including police cars, motorcycles, fire trucks, boats, and helicopters. The National Police has its own special unit for riot control and crowd control and security of public buildings, called the Compagnies Republicaines de Sécurité a unit formed in 1944 right after the liberation of France. Vans of CRS agents are frequently seen in the center of the city when there are demonstrations and public events. The police are supported by the National Gendarmerie, a branch of the French Armed Forces, though their police operations now are supervised by the Ministry of the Interior. The traditional kepis of the gendarmes were replaced in 2002 with caps, and the force modernized, though they still wear kepis for ceremonial occasions. Crime in Paris is similar to that in most large cities. Violent crime is relatively rare in the city centre. Political violence is uncommon, though very large demonstrations may occur in Paris and other French cities simultaneously. These demonstrations, usually managed by a strong police presence, can turn confrontational, and escalate into violence. Chapter 5 Cityscape. Chapter 5 Section 1, Urbanism and Architecture. Most French rulers since the Middle Ages made a point of leaving their mark on a city that, contrary to many other of the world's capitals, has never been destroyed by catastrophe or war. In modernizing its infrastructure through the centuries, Paris has preserved even its earliest history in its street map. At its origin, before the Middle Ages, the city was composed of several islands and sandbanks in a bend of the Seine, of those, two remain today, Ile Saint-Louis and the Ile de la Cite. A third one is the 1827 artificially created Ile aux Seine. Modern Paris owes much of its downtown plan and architectural harmony to Napoleon III and his prefect of the Seine, 
Baron Osman. Between 1853 and 1870 they rebuilt the city centre, created the wide downtown boulevards and squares where the boulevards intersected, imposed standard facades along the boulevards, and required that the facades be built of the distinctive cream grey Paris stone. They also built the major parks around the city centre. The high residential population of its city centre also makes it much different from most other western major cities. Paris's urbanism laws have been under strict control since the early 17th century, particularly where street front alignment, building height and building distribution is concerned. In recent developments, a 1974-2010 building height limitation of 37 meters was raised to 50 meters in central areas and 180 meters in some of Paris's peripheral quarters, yet for some of the city's more central quarters, even older building height laws still remain in effect. The 210 meters tour Montparnasse was both Paris's and France's tallest building since 1973, but this record has been held by the La Defense Quarter Tour First Tower in Courbevoie since its 2011 construction. Parisian examples of historical architectural styles date back more than a millennium, including the Romanesque Church of the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, the early Gothic architecture of the Basilica of Saint-Denis, the Notre-Dame Cathedral, the flamboyant Gothic of Saint-Chapelle, the Baroque churches of Saint-Paul-Saint-Louis and Les Invalides. The 19th century produced the neoclassical Church of La Madeleine, the Palais Garnier serving as an opera house, the neo-Byzantine Basilica of Sacré-Cœur, as well as the exuberant Belle Epoque modernism of the Eiffel Tower. Striking examples of 20th-century architecture include the St. George's Pompidou by Richard Rogers and Renzo Piano, the Site des Sciences et de l'Industrie by various architects, the Arab World Institute by Jean Nouvelle, the Louvre Pyramid by I. M. Pei and the Opera Bastille by Carlos Ott. Contemporary architecture includes the Musée du Quai Bronley, Jacques Chirac by Jean Nouvelle, the Contemporary Art Museum of the Louis Vuitton Foundation by Frank Gehry, and the new Tribunal de Grand Instance de Paris by Renzo Piano. Chapter 5 Section 2 Housing the most expensive residential streets in Paris in 2018 by average price per square meter were Avenue Montaigne, at €22,372 per square meter, Place Dauphine and the Rue de Furstenberg at €18,839 per square meter. The total number of residences in the city of Paris in 2011 was 1,356,074, up from a former high of 1,334,815 in 2006. Among these, 1,165,541 were main residences, 91,835 were secondary residences, and the remaining 7.3% were empty. 62% of its buildings date from 1949 and before. 20% were built between 1949 and, and 1974, and only 18% of the buildings remaining were built after that date. Two-thirds of the city's 1.3 million residences are studio and two-room apartments. Paris averages 1.9 people per residence, a number that has remained constant since the 1980s, but it is much less than Ile de France's 2.33 person per residence average. Only 33% of principal residents Parisians own their habitation, the major part of the city's population is a rent-paying one. Social or public housing represented 19.9% of the city's total residences in 2017. Its distribution varies widely throughout the city, from 2.6% of the housing in the wealthy 7th arrondissement, to 24% in the 20th arrondissement. 26% in the 14th arrondissement and 39.9% in the 19th arrondissement, on the poorer southwest and northern edges of the city. On the night of 8 9 February 2019, during a period of cold weather, a Paris NGO conducted its annual citywide count of homeless persons. They counted 3,641 homeless persons in Paris, of whom 12% were women. More than half had been homeless for more than a year. 2,885 were living in the streets or parks, 298 in train and metro stations, and 756 in other forms of temporary shelter. 
This was an increase of 588 persons since 2018. Chapter 5 Section 3, Paris and its Suburbs Aside from the 20th century edition of the Bois de Boulogne, the Bois de Vincennes and the Paris Heliport, Paris's administrative limits have remained unchanged since 1860. A greater administrative Seine department had been governing Paris and its suburbs since its creation in 1790, but the rising suburban population had made it difficult to maintain as a unique entity. To address this problem, the parent district de la région parisienne was reorganized into several new departments from 1968, Paris became a department in itself, and the administration of its suburbs was divided between the three new departments surrounding it. The district of the Paris region was renamed Ile de France in 1977, but this abbreviated Paris region name is still commonly used, today to describe the Ile de France, and as a vague reference to the entire Paris agglomeration. Long-intended measures to unite Paris with its suburbs began on 1 January 2016, when the Metropole du Grand Paris came into existence. Paris's disconnect with its suburbs, its lack of suburban transportation, in particular, became all too apparent with the Paris agglomeration's growth. Paul de Louvria promised to resolve the Paris suburbs mesententi when he became head of the Paris region in 1961. Two of his most ambitious projects for the region were the construction of five suburban Ville Nouvelle and the recommuter train network. Many other suburban residential districts were built between the 1960s and 1970s to provide a low-cost solution for a rapidly expanding population, these districts were socially mixed at first, but few residents actually owned their homes. Their poor construction quality and their haphazard insertion into existing urban growth contributed to their desertion by those able to move elsewhere and their repopulation by those with more limited possibilities. These areas, courtiers sensibles, are in northern and eastern Paris, namely around its Goutte d'Or and Belleville neighborhoods. To the north of the city, they are grouped mainly in the Seine Saint Denis department, and to a lesser extreme to the east in the Val d'Oise department. Other difficult areas are located in the Seine Valley, in Evriette Corbeil Essons, in Muros, Mont La Jolie, and scattered among social housing districts created by Delouvria's 1961 Ville Nouvelle Political Initiative. The Paris agglomeration's urban sociology is basically that of 19th century Paris, its fortune classes are situated in its west and southwest, and its middle to lower classes are in its north and east. The remaining areas are mostly middle-class citizenry dotted with islands of fortune populations located there due to reasons of historical importance, namely saint maur des Force to the east and ongon les bains to the north of Paris. Chapter 6 – Demographics The official estimated population of the city of Paris was 2,165,423 on 1 January 2022, according to the INSEE the official French statistical agency. This was a decline of 11,000 from January 2021, and a drop of 65,000 over six years. Despite the drop, Paris remains the most densely populated city in Europe, with 252 residents per hectare, not counting parks. This drop was attributed partly to a lower birth rate, the departure of middle-class residents and the possible loss of housing in the city due to short-term rentals for tourism. Paris is the fourth-largest municipality in the European Union, following Berlin, Madrid, and Rome. Eurostat places Paris behind London and ahead of Berlin, based on the 2012 populations of what Eurostat calls urban audit core cities. The population of Paris today is lower than its historical peak of 2.9 million in 1921. The principal reasons were a significant decline in household size, and a dramatic migration of residents to the suburbs between 1962 and 1975. Factors in the migration included deindustrialization, high rent, the gentrification of many inner quarters, the transformation of living space into offices, and greater affluence among working families. The city's population loss came to a temporary halt at the beginning of the 21st century, the population increased from 2,125,246 in 1999 to 2,240,621 in 2012, 
before declining again slightly in 2017. It declined again in 2018. Paris is the core of a built-up area that extends well beyond its limits, commonly referred to as the agglomeration Parisienne, and statistically as a unite urbaine, the Paris agglomeration's population of 10,784,830 in 2017 made it the largest urban area in the European Union. City-influenced commuter activity reaches well beyond even this in a statistical area urbain de Paris, that had a population of 12,628,266 in 2017, 19% the population of France, and the largest metropolitan area in the Eurozone. According to Eurostat, the EU statistical agency, in 2012 the Commune of Paris was the most densely populated city in the European Union, with 21,616 people per square kilometre within the city limits, ahead of the London West which had 10,374 people per square kilometre. According to the same census, three departments bordering Paris, Eau de Seine, Seine-Saint-Denis and Val-de-Marne, had population densities of over 10,000 people per square kilometre, ranking among the ten most densely populated areas of the EU. Chapter 6, Section 1, Migration According to the 2012 French census, 586,163 residents of the city of Paris, or 26.2%, and 2,782,834 residents of the Paris region, or 23.4%, were born outside of metropolitan France. 26,700 of these in the city of Paris and 210,159 in the Paris region were people born in overseas France and are therefore not counted as immigrants since they were legally French citizens at birth. A further 103,648 in the city of Paris and in 412,114 in the Paris region were born in foreign countries with French citizenship at birth. This concerns in particular the many Christians and Jews from North Africa who moved to France and Paris after the times of independence and are not counted as immigrants due to their being born French citizens. The remaining group, people born in foreign countries with no French citizenship at birth, are those defined as immigrants under French law. According to the 2012 census, 135,853 residents of the city of Paris were immigrants from Europe. 112,369 were immigrants from the Maghreb, 70,852 from Sub-Saharan Africa and Egypt, 5,059 from Turkey, 91,297 from Asia, 38,858 from the Americas, and 1,365 from the South Pacific. Note that the immigrants from the Americas and the South Pacific in Paris are vastly outnumbered by migrants from French overseas regions and territories located in these regions of the world. In the Paris region, 590,504 residents were immigrants from Europe, 627,078 were immigrants from the Maghreb, 435,339 from Sub Saharan Africa and Egypt. 69,338 from Turkey, 322,330 from Asia, 113,363 from the Americas, and 2,261 from the South Pacific. These last two groups of immigrants are again vastly outnumbered by migrants from French overseas regions and territories located in the Americas and the South Pacific. In 2012, there were 8,810 British citizens and 10,019 United States citizens living in the city of Paris and 20,466 British citizens and 16,408 United States citizens living in the entire Paris region. Chapter 6, Section 2, Religion At the beginning of the 20th century, Paris was the largest Catholic city in the world. French census data does not contain information about religious affiliation. According to a 2011 survey by the Institut Français d'Opinion Publique, a French public opinion research organization, 61% of residents of the Paris region identified themselves as Roman Catholic. In the same survey, 7% of residents identified themselves as Muslims, 4% as Protestants, 
2% as Jewish and 25% as without religion. According to the INC, between 4 and 5 million French residents were born or had at least one parent born in a predominantly Muslim country, particularly Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. An IFUP survey in 2008 reported that, of immigrants from these predominantly Muslim countries, 25% went to the mosque regularly, 41% practiced the religion, and 34% were believers but did not practice the religion. In 2012 and 2013, it was estimated that there were almost 500,000 Muslims in the city of Paris, 1.5 million Muslims in the Ile de France region and 4 to 5 million Muslims in France. The Jewish population of the Paris region was estimated in 2014 to be 282,000, the largest concentration of Jews in the world outside of Israel and the United States. Chapter 7 International Organizations The United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization has had its headquarters in Paris since November 1958. Paris is also the home of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Paris hosts the headquarters of the European Space Agency, the International Energy Agency, European Securities and Markets Authority and, since 2019, the European Banking Authority. Chapter 8 Economy the economy of the city of Paris is based largely on services and commerce, of the 390,480 enterprises in the city, 80.6% are engaged in commerce, transportation, and diverse services, 6.5% in construction, and just 3.8% in industry. The story is similar in the Paris region, 76.7% of enterprises are engaged in commerce and services, and 3.4% in industry. Of the 2012 census, 59.5% of jobs in the Paris region were in market services, 26.9% in non market services, 8.2% in manufacturing and utilities, 5.2% in construction, and 0.2% in agriculture. Of the Paris region had 5.4 million salaried employees in 2010 of whom 2.2 million were concentrated in 39 poles d'emploi or business districts. The largest of these, in terms of number of employees, is known in French as the QCA, or Quartier Central des Affaires, it is in the western part of the city of Paris, in the 2nd, 8th, 9th, 16th, and 18th arrondissements. In 2010, it was the workplace of 500,000 salaried employees, about 30% of the salaried employees in Paris and 10% of those in the Ile de France. The largest sectors of activity in the central business district were finance and insurance and business services. The district also includes a large concentration of department stores, shopping areas, hotels and restaurants, as well as government offices and ministries. The second largest business district in terms of employment is La Defense, just west of the city where many companies installed their offices in the 1990s. In 2010, it was the workplace of 144,600 employees, of whom 38% worked in finance and insurance, 16% in business support services. Two other important districts, Neuilly-sur-Seine and levelois perret are extensions of the Paris Business District and of La Defense. Another district, including boulogne billancourt issy les moulineaux and the southern part of the 15th arrondissement, is a center of activity for the media and information technology. The top 10 French companies listed in the Fortune Global 500 for 2018 all have their headquarters in the Paris region, six in the central business district of the city of Paris, and four close to the city in the Eau de Seine department, three in La Defense and one in boulogne billancourt Some companies, like Société Générale, have offices in both Paris and La Défense. The Paris region is France's leading region for economic activity, with a GDP of €681 billion Euros and €56,000 per capita. In 2011, its GDP ranked second among the regions of Europe and its per capita GDP was the fourth highest in Europe. While the Paris region's population accounted for 18.8% .8 of metropolitan France in 2011, 
The Paris region's GDP accounted for 30% of metropolitan France's GDP. The Paris region economy has gradually shifted from industry to high-value added service industries and high-tech manufacturing. The Paris region's most intense economic activity through the central Eau de Seine department and suburban La Defense business district places Paris's economic center to the west of the city, in a triangle between the Opera Garnier, La Defense and the Val de Seine. While the Paris economy is dominated by services, and employment in manufacturing sector has declined sharply, the region remains an important manufacturing center, particularly for aeronautics, automobiles, and eco industries. In the 2017 Worldwide Cost of Living Survey by the Economist Intelligence Unit, based on a survey made in September 2016, Paris ranked as the seventh most expensive city in the world, and the second most expensive in Europe, after Zurich. In 2018, Paris was the most expensive city in the world with Singapore and Hong Kong. Station F is a business incubator for startups, located in 13th arrondissement of Paris. Noted as the world's largest startup facility. Chapter 8 Section 1 Employment According to 2015 in C figures, 68.3% of employees in the city of Paris work in commerce, transportation, and services, 24.5% in public administration, health and social services, 4.1% in industry, and 0.1% in agriculture. The majority of Paris's salaried employees fill 370,000 businesses services jobs, concentrated in the northwestern 8th, 16th, and 17th arrondissements. Paris's financial service companies are concentrated in the central western 8th and 9th arrondissement banking and insurance district. Paris's department store district in the 1st, 6th, 8th and 9th arrondissements employ 10% of mostly female Paris workers, with 100,000 of these registered in the retail trade. 14% of Parisians work in hotels and restaurants and other services to individuals. 19% of Paris employees work for the state in either administration or education. The majority of Paris's healthcare and social workers work at the hospitals and social housing concentrated in the peripheral 13th, 14th, 18th, 19th and 20th arrondissements. Outside Paris, the western Eau de Seine Department La Defense District specializing in finance, insurance and scientific research district, employs 144,600, and the northeastern Seine Saint-Denis audiovisual sector has 200 media firms and 10 major film studios. Paris's manufacturing is mostly focused in its suburbs, and the city itself has only around 75,000 manufacturing workers, most of which are in the textile, clothing, leather goods, and shoe trades. Paris region manufacturing specializes in transportation, mainly automobiles, aircraft and trains, but this is in a sharp decline, Paris proper manufacturing jobs dropped by 64% between 1990 and 2010, and the Paris region lost 48% during the same period. Most of this is due to companies relocating outside the Paris region. The Paris region's 800 aerospace companies employed 100,000. 400 automobile industry companies employ another 100,000 workers, Many of these are centered in the Evelyn department around the Renault and PSA Citroën plants, but the industry as a whole suffered a major loss with the 2014 closing of a major all nasu boys Citroën assembly plant. The Southern Asson department specializes in science and technology, and the southeastern Val de Marne, with its wholesale Rungis food market, specializes in food processing and beverages. The Paris region's manufacturing decline is quickly being replaced by eco industries. These employ about 100,000 workers. In 2011, while only 56,927 construction workers worked in Paris itself, its metropolitan area employed 246,639, in an activity centered largely on the Seine Saint Denis and Eau de Seine departments and the new business park centers appearing there. Chapter 8, Section 2 Unemployment Paris's 2015 at census unemployment rate was 12.2%, and in the first trimester of 2018, its ELO criteria unemployment rate was 7.1%. The provisional unemployment rate in the whole Paris region was higher, 
8.0%, and considerably higher in some suburbs, notably the department of Seine-Saint-Denis to the east and the Val d'Oise to the north. Chapter 8 Section 3, Incomes The average net household income in Paris was €36,085 for 2011. It ranged from €22,095 in the 19th arrondissement to €82,449 in the 7th arrondissement. The median taxable income for 2011 was around €25,000 in Paris and €22,200 for Ile de France. Generally speaking, incomes are higher in the western part of the city and in the western suburbs than in the northern and eastern parts of the urban area. Unemployment was estimated at 8.2% in the city of Paris and 8.8% in the Ile de France region in the first trimester of 2015. It ranged from 7.6% in the wealthy Assonne department to 13.1% in the Seine Saint Denis department, where many recent immigrants live. While Paris has some of the richest neighborhoods in France, it also has some of the poorest, mostly on the eastern side of the city. In 2012, 14% of households in the city earned less than €977 Euros per month, the official poverty line. 25% of residents in the 19th arrondissement lived below the poverty line, 24% in the 18th, 22% in the 20th and 18th percent in the 10th. In the city's wealthiest neighborhood, the 7th arrondissement, 7% lived below the poverty line, 8% in the 6th arrondissement, and 9% in the 16th arrondissement. Chapter 8 Section 4, Tourism Paris received 12.6 million visitors in 2020, measured by hotel stays, a drop of 73% from 2019, due to the COVID-19 virus. The number of foreign visitors declined by 80.7% Greater Paris, comprising Paris and its three surrounding departments, received 38 million visitors in 2019, a record, measured by hotel arrivals. These included 12.2 million French visitors. Of foreign visitors, the greatest number came from the United States, United Kingdom, Germany and China. However, tourism to Paris and its region fell to 17.5 million in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, with a 78% drop in foreign tourists measured by hotel stays, and a drop of 56% in French guests, for an overall drop of 68%. This caused a drop 15 billion euros in hotel receipts. In 2018, measured by the Euromonitor Global Cities Destination Index, Paris was the second busiest airline destination in the world, with 19.10 million visitors, behind Bangkok but ahead of London. According to the Paris Convention and Visitors Bureau, 393,008 workers in Greater Paris, or 12.4% of the total workforce, are engaged in tourism-related sectors such as hotels, catering, transport and leisure. Chapter 8 Section 5 Monuments and Attractions The city's top cultural attraction in 2019 was the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur, followed by the Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, the Centre Pompidou, and the Musée d'Orsay. The centre of Paris contains the most visited monuments in the city, including the Notre Dame Cathedral and the Louvre as well as the Sainte-Chapelle, Les Invalides, where the tomb of Napoleon is located, and the Eiffel Tower are located on the left bank southwest of the centre. The Pantheon and the Catacombs of Paris are also located on the left bank of the Seine. The banks of the Seine from the Pont de Sully to the Pont d'Aina have been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1991. Other landmarks are laid out east to west along the historical axis of Paris, which runs from the Louvre through the Tuileries Garden, the Luxor Column in the Place de la Concorde, and the Arc de Triomphe, to the Grand Arch of La Défense. Several other much-visited landmarks are located in the suburbs of the city, the Basilica of Saint Denis, in saint saint denis is the birthplace of the Gothic style of architecture and the royal necropolis of French kings and queens. The Paris region hosts three other UNESCO heritage sites, the Palace of Versailles in the west, the Palace of Fontainebleau in the south, and the medieval fairs, site of Provence in the east. In the Paris region, Disneyland Paris, 
in Marne-la-Vallée, 32 kilometers east of the center of Paris, received 9.66 million visitors in 2017. Chapter 8 Section 6, Hotels In 2019 Greater Paris had 2,056 hotels, including 94 five-star hotels, with a total of 121,646 rooms. Paris has long been famous for its grand hotels. The Hotel Maurice, opened for British travelers in 1817, was one of the first luxury hotels in Paris. The arrival of the railways and the Paris Exposition of 1855 brought the first flood of tourists and the first modern grand hotels, the Hotel du Louvre in 1855, the Grand Hotel in 1862, and the Hotel Continental in 1878. The Hotel Ritz on Place Vendôme opened in 1898, followed by the Hotel Crillon, in an 18th century building on the Place de la Concorde in 1909, the Hotel Bristol on the Rue du Faubourg Saint Honoré in 1925, and the Hotel George V in 1928, got in addition to hotels. In 2019 Greater Paris had 60,000 homes registered with Airbnb. Under French law, renters of these units must pay the Paris tourism tax. The company paid the city government 7.3 million euros in 2016. Chapter 9, Culture Chapter 9 Section 1, Painting and Sculpture For centuries, Paris has attracted artists from around the world who arrive in the city to educate themselves and to seek inspiration from its vast pool of artistic resources and galleries. As a result, Paris has acquired a reputation as the city of art. Italian artists were a profound influence on the development of art in Paris in the 16th and 17th centuries, particularly in sculpture and reliefs. Painting and sculpture became the pride of the French monarchy and the French royal family commissioned many Parisian artists to adorn their palaces during the French Baroque and Classicism era. Sculptors such as Gerdon, Coisevox and Cousteau acquired reputations as the finest artists in the royal court in 17th century France. Pierre Minard became the first painter to King Louis XIV during this period. In 1648, the Académie Royale de Pontour et de Sculpture was established to accommodate for the dramatic interest in art in the capital. This served as France's top art school until 1793. Paris was in its artistic prime in the 19th century and early 20th century, when it had a colony of artists established in the city and in art schools associated with some of the finest painters of the times, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Édouard Manet, Claude Monet, Berta Morisot, Paul Gauguin, Pierre-Auguste Renoir and others. The French Revolution, and political and social change in France had a profound influence on art in the capital. Paris was central to the development of Romanticism in art, with painters such as Géricault. Impressionism, Art Nouveau, Symbolism, Fauvism, Cubism, and Art Deco movements all evolved in Paris. In the late 19th century, many artists in the French provinces and worldwide flocked to Paris to exhibit their works in the numerous salons and expositions and make a name for themselves. Artists such as Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse, Vincent van Gogh, Paul Cézanne, Jean Metzinger, Albert Gleises, Henri Rousseau, Marc Chagall, Amadeo Modiani and many others became associated with Paris. Picasso, Living in Le Bateau Lavoir in Montmartre, painted his famous La Famille de Saltimbanques and Les Demoiselles d'Avignon between 1905 and 1907. Montmartre and Montparnasse became centers for artistic production. The most prestigious names of French and foreign sculptors, who made their reputation in Paris in the modern era, are Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi, Auguste Rodin, Camille Claudel, Antoine Bourdel, Paul Landowski and Aristide Mayal. The Golden Age of the School of Paris ended between the two world wars. Chapter 9 Section 2, Photography The inventor Nice Fournites produced the first permanent photograph on a polished pewter plate in Paris in 1825. In 1839, after the death of Nietzsche, Louis Daguerre patented the daguerreotype, which became the most common form of photography until the 1860s. 
The work of Etienne Jules Marais in the 1880s contributed considerably to the development of modern photography. Photography came to occupy a central role in Parisian surrealist activity, in the works of Man Ray and Maurice Tabard. Numerous photographers achieved renown for their photography of Paris, including Eugene Auger, noted for his depictions of street scenes, Robert Duneau, noted for his playful pictures of people and market scenes, Marcel Bovis, noted for his night scenes, as well as others such as Jacques-Henri Lartigue and Henri Cartier-Bresson. Poster art also became an important art form in Paris in the late 19th century, through the work of Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Jules Cheret, Eugène Grasset, Adolphe Willette, Pierre Bonnard, Georges Duffer, Henri Gabriel Ibels, Paul Gavani, and Alphonse Moucher. Chapter 9 Section 3 Museums Paris museums were closed for much of 2020, but gradually reopened in 2021, with limitations on the number of visitors at a time and a requirement that visitors wear masks and show proof of vaccination. The Louvre received 2,8 million visitors in 2021, nearly the lowest since 1986, but up from 2.7 million in 2020. Its treasures include the Mona Lisa, the Venus de Milo statue, Liberty Leading the People. The second most visited museum in the city in 2021, with 1.5 million visitors, was the Centre Georges Pompidou, also known as Beauburg, which houses the Musée National d'Art Moderne the third most visited Paris museum in 2021 in a building constructed for the Paris Universal Exhibition of 1900 as the Orsay Railway Station, was the Musée d'Orsay, which had 1 million visitors, 30% up from 2020. The Orsay displays French art of the 19th century, including major collections of the Impressionists and Post-Impressionists. The Musée de la Rongerie, near both the Louvre and the Orsay, also exhibits Impressionists and Post-Impressionists, including most of Claude Monet's large water lilies murals. The Musée National du Moyen Age, or Cluny Museum, presents medieval art, including the famous tapestry cycle of the Lady and the Unicorn. The Gimmick Museum, or Musée National des Arts Asiatiques, has one of the largest collections of Asian art in Europe. There are also notable museums devoted to individual artists, including the Musée Picasso, the Musée Rodin and the Musée National Eugène Delacroix. Paris hosts one of the largest science museums in Europe, the Site des Sciences et de l'Industrie at La Villette. It attracted 648,828 visitors in 2020. The National Museum of Natural History located near the Jardin des Plantes attracted 879,203 visitors in 2020. It is famous for its dinosaur artifacts, mineral collections and its gallery of evolution. The military history of France, from the Middle Ages to World War II, is vividly presented by displays at the Musée de l'Armée at Les Invalides, near the tomb of Napoleon. In addition to the national museums, run by the Ministry of Culture, the city of Paris operates 14 museums, including the Carnavalet Museum on the History of Paris, Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris, Palais de Tokyo, the House of Victor Hugo, the House of Balzac and the Catacombs of Paris. There are also notable private museums, the Contemporary Art Museum of the Louis Vuitton Foundation, designed by architect Frank Gehry opened in October 2014 in the Bois de Boulogne. Chapter 9 Section 4, Theatre The largest opera houses of Paris are the 19th-century Opera Garnier, and modern Opera Bastille, the former tends toward the more classic ballets and operas, and the latter provides a mixed repertoire of classic and modern. In middle of the 19th century, there were three other active and competing opera houses, the Opera Comique, Theatre Italien and Theatre Lyrique. Philharmonie de Paris, the modern symphonic concert hall of Paris, opened in January 2015. Another musical landmark is the Theatre des Champs-Élysées, where the first performances of Diaghilev's Ballets Russes took place in 1913. Theatre traditionally has occupied a large place in Parisian culture, and many of its most popular actors today are also stars of French television. The oldest and most famous Paris theatre is the Comédie Française, founded in 1680. 
Run by the government of France, it performs mostly French classics at the Salle Richelieu in the Palais Royal at 2 Rue de Richelieu, next to the Louvre. Of other famous theatres include the Odeon Theatre de l'Europe, next to the Luxembourg Gardens, also a state institution and theatrical landmark, the Theatre Mogador, and the Theatre de la Gaîté Montparnasse. The Music Hall and Cabaret are famous Paris institutions. The Moulin Rouge was opened in 1889. It was highly visible because of its large red imitation windmill on its roof, and became the birthplace of the dance known as the French Cancan. It helped make famous the singers Mist on Get and Edith Piaf and the painter Toulouse Lautrec, who made posters for the venue. In 1911, the Dance Hall Olympia Paris invented the Grand Staircase as a settling for its shows, competing with its great rival, the Folie Bergeret. Its stars in the 1920s included the American singer and dancer Josephine Baker. Later, Olympia Paris presented Dalida, Edith Piaf, Marlene Dietrich, Miles Davis, Judy Garland and the Grateful Dead. The Casino de Paris presented many famous French singers, including Mies Donguette, Maurice Chevalier, and Tino Rossi. Other famous Paris music halls include Le Lido, on the Champs-Élysées, opened in 1946, and the Crazy Horse Saloon, featuring striptease, dance and magic, opened in 1951. A half-dozen music halls exist today in Paris, attended mostly by visitors to the city. Chapter 9 Section 5, Literature The first book printed in France, Epistoli, by Gasparinus de Bergamo, was published in Paris in 1470 by the press established by Johann Heinlein. Since then, Paris has been the centre of the French publishing industry, the home of some of the world's best-known writers and poets and the setting for many classic works of French literature. Almost all the books published in Paris in the Middle Ages were in Latin, rather than French. Paris did not become the acknowledged capital of French literature until the 17th century, with authors such as Boileau, Corneille, La Fontaine, Molière, Racine, Charles Perrault, several coming from the provinces, as well as the foundation of the Académie Française. In the 18th century, the literary life of Paris revolved around the cafés and salons, it was dominated by Voltaire, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Pierre de Marivaux and Pierre Beaumarchais. During the 19th century, Paris was the home and subject for some of France's greatest writers, including Charles Baudelaire, Stéphane Mallarmé, Mary May, Alfred de Moussy, Marcel Proust, Émile Zola, Alexandre Dumas, Gustave Flaubert, Guy de Maupassant and Honoré de Balzac. Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame inspired the renovation of its setting, the Notre Dame de Paris. Another of Victor Hugo's works, Les Miserables, written while he was in exile outside France during the Second Empire, described the social change and political turmoil in Paris in the early 1830s. One of the most popular of all French writers, Jules Verne, worked at the Théâtre Lyrique and the Paris Stock Exchange, while he did research for his stories at the National Library. In the 20th century, the Paris literary community was dominated by figures such as Colette, André Gide, François Mauriac, André Malraux, Albert Camus, and, after World War II, by Simone de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre. Between the wars it was the home of many important expatriate writers, including Ernest Hemingway, Samuel Beckett, Miguel Angel Asturias, Alejo Carpentier and, Arturo Osla Pietri. The winner of the 2014 Nobel Prize in Literature, Patrick Magiano, based most of his literary work on the depiction of the city during World War II and the 1960s-1970s. Paris is a city of books and bookstores. In the 1970s, 80% of French-language publishing houses were found in Paris, almost all on the left bank in the 5th, 6th and 7th arrondissements. Since that time, because of high prices, some publishers have moved out to the less expensive areas. It is also a city of small bookstores. There are about 150 bookstores in the 5th arrondissement alone, plus another 250 bookstores along the Seine. Small Paris bookstores are protected against competition from discount booksellers by French law, books, 
even e-books, cannot be discounted more than 5% below their publisher's cover price. Chapter 9 Section 6, Music In the late 12th century, a school of polyphony was established at Notre Dame. Among the trouvères of northern France, a group of Parisian aristocrats became known for their poetry and songs. Troubadours, from the south of France, were also popular. During the reign of Francois I, in the Renaissance era, the lute became popular in the French court. The French royal family, and courtiers disported themselves in masks, ballets, allegorical dances, recitals, and opera and comedy, and a national musical printing house was established. In the Baroque era, noted composers included Jean-Baptiste Lully, Jean-Philippe Rameau, and François Couperin. The Conservatoire de Musique de Paris was founded in 1795. By 1870, Paris had become an important centre for symphony, ballet and operatic music. Romantic-era composers include Hector Berlioz, Charles Gounod, Camille Sansons, Leo de Libé and Jules Massenet, among others. Georges Bazet's Carmen premiered 3 March 1875. Carmen has since become one of the most popular and frequently performed operas in the classical canon. Among the Impressionist composers who created new works for piano, orchestra, opera, chamber music and other musical forms, stand in particular, Claude Debussy, Eric Satie and Maurice Ravel. Several foreign-born composers, such as Frédéric Chopin, Franz Liszt, Jacques Offenbach, Niccolo Paganini, and Igor Stravinsky, established themselves or made significant contributions both with their works and their influence in Paris. Balmusette is a style of French music and dance that first became popular in Paris in the 1870s and 1880s, by 1880 Paris had some 150 dance halls in the working-class neighborhoods of the city. Patrons danced the bourrée to the accompaniment of the cabaret and often the viella rue in the cafés and bars of the city. Parisian and Italian musicians who played the accordion adopted the style and established themselves in Auvergnat bars especially in the 19th arrondissement, and the romantic sounds of the accordion has since become one of the musical icons of the city. Paris became a major center for jazz and still attracts jazz musicians from all around the world to its clubs and cafes. Paris is the spiritual home of gypsy jazz in particular, and many of the Parisian jazzmen who developed in the first half of the 20th century began by playing bal musette in the city. Django Reinhardt rose to fame in Paris, having moved to the 18th arrondissement in a caravan as a young boy, and performed with violinist Stéphane Grappelli and their Quintet du Hot Club de France in the 1930s and 1940s. Immediately after the war, the Saint Germain de Pré Quarter and the nearby Saint Michel Quarter became home to many small jazz clubs, mostly found in cellars because of a lack of space. These included the Caveau de l'Oriente, the Club Saint Germain, the Rose Rouge, the Vieux Colombier, and the most famous, Le Tabou. They introduced Parisians to the music of Claude Luter. Boris Vion, Sidney Bechet, Mesmesro, and Henri Salvador. Most of the clubs closed by the early 1960s, as musical tastes shifted toward rock and roll. Some of the finest Manouche musicians in the world are found here playing the cafes of the city at night. Some of the more notable jazz venues include The New Morning, Le Sunset, La Chope des Puces, and Bouquet du Nord. Several yearly festivals take place in Paris including the Paris Jazz Festival and the rock festival Rock en Seine. The Orchestra de Paris was established in 1967. On 19 December 2015, Paris and other worldwide fans commemorated the 100th anniversary of the birth of Edith Piaf, a cabaret singer-songwriter and actress who became widely regarded as France's national chanteurs, as well as being one of France's greatest international stars. Other singers, of similar style, include Maurice Chevalier, Charles Aznavour, Yves Montan, as well as Charles Trenet. Paris has a big hip-hop scene. This music became popular during the 1980s. The presence of a large African and Caribbean community helped to its development, it gave a voice, a political and social status for many minorities. Chapter 9 Section 7, Cinema 
The movie industry was born in Paris when Auguste and Louis Lumiere projected the first motion picture for a paying audience at the Grand Café on 28 December 1895. Many of Paris's concert-slash-dance halls were transformed into cinemas when the media became popular beginning in the 1930s. Later, most of the largest cinemas were divided into multiple, smaller rooms. Paris's largest cinema room today, is in the Grand Rex Theatre with 2,700 seats. Big multiplex cinemas have been built since the 1990s. UGC Cine Site Layout with 27 screens, MK2 Bibliotheque with 20 screens, and UGC Cine Site Percy with 18 screens are among the largest, but Parisians tend to share the same movie going trends as many of the world's global cities, with cinemas primarily dominated by Hollywood generated film entertainment. French cinema comes a close second, with major directors such as Claude Lelouch, Jean-Luc Godard, and Luc Besson, and the more slapstick-slash-popular genre with director Claude Z.D. as an example. European and Asian films are also widely shown and appreciated. On 2 February 2000, Philippe Binant realized the first digital cinema projection in Europe, with the DLP cinema technology developed by Texas Instruments in Paris. Chapter 9 Section 8, Restaurants and Cuisine Since the late 18th century, Paris has been famous for its restaurants and haute cuisine, food meticulously prepared and artfully presented. A luxury restaurant, La Taverne Anglaise, opened in 1786 in the arcades of the Palais Royal by Antoine Beauvillier, it featured an elegant dining room, an extensive menu, linen tablecloths, a large wine list and well-trained waiters, it became a model for future Paris restaurants. The restaurant Le Grand Vefour in the Palais Royal dates from the same period. The famous Paris restaurants of the 19th century, including the Café de Paris, the Rocher de Cancale, the Café Anglais, Maison Dory and the Café Riche, were mostly located near the theatres on the Boulevard des Italiens, they were immortalized in the novels of Balzac and Émile Zola. Several of the best-known restaurants in Paris today appeared during the Belle Époque, including Maxim's on Rue Royale, Le Doyon in the gardens of the Champs-Élysées, and the Tour d'Argent on the Quai de la Tournelle. Today, due to Paris's cosmopolitan population, every French regional cuisine and almost every national cuisine in the world can be found there, the city has more than 9,000 restaurants. The Michelin Guide has been a standard guide to French restaurants, since 1900, awarding its highest award, three stars, to the best restaurants in France. In 2018, of the 27 Michelin three-star restaurants in France, 10 are located in Paris. These include both restaurants which serve classical French cuisine, such as L'Ombrasie in the Place des Vosges, and those which serve non-traditional menus, such as L'Astrance, which combines French and Asian cuisines. Several of France's most famous chefs, including Pierre Gomier, Alain Ducasse, Yannick Alino, and Alain Passard, have three-star restaurants in Paris. In addition to the classical restaurants, Paris has several other kinds of traditional eating places. The café arrived in Paris in the 17th century, when the beverage was first brought from Turkey, and by the 18th century Parisian cafés were centers of the city's political and cultural life. The Café Procope on the left bank dates from this period. In the 20th century, the cafés of the left bank, especially Café de la Ratonde and Le Dôme Café in Montparnasse and Café de Flore and Le de Margot on Boulevard Saint-Germain, all still in business, were important meeting places for painters, writers and philosophers. A bistro is a type of eating place loosely defined as a neighborhood restaurant with a modest decor and prices and a regular clientele and a congenial atmosphere. Its name is said to have come in 1814 from the Russian soldiers who occupied the city, bistro means quickly in Russian, and they wanted their meals served rapidly so they could get back their encampment. Real bistros are increasingly rare in Paris, due to rising costs, competition from cheaper ethnic restaurants, and different eating habits of Parisian diners. A brasserie originally was a tavern located next to a brewery, which served beer and food at any hour. 
Beginning with the Paris Exposition of 1867, it became a popular kind of restaurant which featured beer and other beverages served by young women in the national costume associated with the beverage, particular German costumes for beer. Now brasseries, like cafes, serve food and drinks throughout the day. Chapter 9 Section 9 Fashion Since the 19th century, Paris has been an international fashion capital, particularly in the domain of haute couture. It is home to some of the largest fashion houses in the world, including Dior and Chanel, as well as many other well-known and more contemporary fashion designers, such as Karl Lagerfeld, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Yves Saint Laurent, Givenchy, and Christian Lacroix. Paris Fashion Week, held in January, and July in the Carousel du Louvre among other renowned city locations, is one of the top four events on the international fashion calendar. The other fashion capitals of the world, Milan, London, and New York also host fashion weeks. Moreover, Paris is also the home of the world's largest cosmetics company, L'Oreal as well as three of the top five global makers of luxury fashion accessories, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, and Cartier. Most of the major fashion designers have their showrooms along the Avenue Montaigne, between the Champs-Élysées and the Seine. Chapter 9 Section 10, Holidays and Festivals Bastille Day, a celebration of the storming of the Bastille in 1789, the biggest festival in the city, is a military parade taking place every year on the 14th of July on the Champs-Élysées, from the Arc de Triomphe to Place de la Concorde. It includes a flypast over the Champs-Élysées by the Patrouille de France, a parade of military units and equipment, and a display of fireworks in the evening, the most spectacular being the one at the Eiffel Tower. Some other yearly festivals are Paris Plage, a festive event that lasts from mid-July to mid-August when the right bank of the Seine is converted into a temporary beach with sand, deck chairs and palm trees, Journées du Patrimoine, Fête de la Musique, Techno Parade, Nuit Blanche. Cinema Eau Claire de Lune, Printemps des Rues, Festival d'Auton, and Fête des Jardins. The Carnaval de Paris, one of the oldest festivals in Paris, dates back to the Middle Ages. Chapter 10, Education Paris is the département with the highest proportion of highly educated people. In 2009, around 40% of Parisians held a license-level diploma or higher, the highest proportion in France, while 13% have no diploma, the third lowest percentage in France. Education in Paris and the Ile de France region employs approximately 330,000 people, 170,000 of whom are teachers and professors teaching approximately 2.9 million children and students in around 9,000 primary, secondary, and higher education schools and institutions. The University of Paris, founded in the 12th century, is often called the Sorbonne after one of its original medieval colleges. It was broken up into 13 autonomous universities in 1970, following the student demonstrations in 1968. Most of the campuses today are in the Latin Quarter where the old university was located, while others are scattered around the city and the suburbs. The Paris region hosts France's highest concentration of the Grandes Écoles, 55 specialized centers of higher education outside or inside the public university structure. The prestigious public universities are usually considered grands établissements. Most of the Grandes Écoles were relocated to the suburbs of Paris in the 1960s and 1970s, in new campuses much larger than the old campuses within the crowded city of Paris, though the École Normale Supérieure, PSL University has remained en rue d'Ulm in the 5th arrondissement. There are a high number of engineering schools, led by the PSL University, the Paris Saclay University, the Polytechnic Institute of Paris, and also independent colleges, such as Ecole des Ponts et Chaussées or Arts et Metiers. There are also many business schools, including EC, INSED, ESSEC, and ESCP Europe. While INA, the school training higher level civil servants, has been relocated from Paris to Strasbourg, three of the most prestigious social sciences universities, Sciences Po, École des Hautes Etudes and Sciences Sociales, and Paris Dauphine are still located in Paris. 
The Parisian School of Journalism Celsa Department of Sorbonne University is located in neuilly sur seine Paris is also home to several of France's most famous high schools, such as Lycée Louis Le Grand, Lycée Henri IV, Lycée Janssen de Cie and Lycée Condorcet. The National Institute of Sport and Physical Education, located in the 12th arrondissement, is both a physical education institute and high-level training center for elite athletes. Chapter 10 Section 1, Libraries The Bibliothèque Nationale de France operates public libraries in Paris, among them the François Mitterrand Library, Richelieu Library, Louvois, Opera Library, and Arsenal Library. There are three public libraries in the 4th arrondissement. The Forney Library, in the Marais district, is dedicated to the decorative arts, the Arsenal Library occupies a former military building, and has a large collection on French literature, and the Bibliothèque Historique de la Ville de Paris, also in Le Marais, contains the Paris Historical Research Service. The saint Geneviève Library, is in 5th arrondissement, designed by Henri Le Brust and built in the mid-1800s, it contains a rare book and manuscript division. Bibliothèque Mazarine, in the 6th arrondissement, is the oldest public library in France. The Médiathèque Musicale Mala in the 8th arrondissement opened in 1986 and contains collections related to music. The François Mitterrand Library, in the 13th arrondissement was completed in 1994 to a design of Dominique Perrault and contains four glass towers. There are several academic libraries and archives in Paris. The Sorbonne Library in the 5th arrondissement, is the largest university library in Paris. In addition to the Sorbonne location, there are branches in Molzerbe, Cliencourt Championnet, Michelet Institut d'Art et d'Archéologie, Serpente Maison de la Recherche, and Institut d'Etudes Ibériques. Other academic libraries include Inter-University Pharmaceutical Library, Leonardo da Vinci University Library, Paris School of Mines Library, and the René Descartes University Library. Chapter 11. Sports. Paris's most popular sport clubs are the Association Football Club, Paris Saint-Germain FC and the rugby union clubs Charles de Francais and Racing 92, the last of which is based just outside the city proper. The 80,000-seat Stade de France, built for the 1998 FIFA World Cup, is located just north of Paris in the commune of Saint-Denis. It is used for football, rugby union and track and field athletics. It hosts the French national football team for friendlies and major tournaments qualifiers, annually hosts the French national rugby team's home matches of the Six Nations Championship, and hosts several important matches of the Stade Francais rugby team. In addition to Paris Saint-Germain FC, the city has a number of other professional and amateur football clubs, Paris FC, Red Star, RCF Paris and Stade Francais Paris. Paris hosted the 1900 and 1924 Summer Olympics and will host the 2024 Summer Olympics and Paralympic Games. The city also hosted the finals of the 1938 FIFA World Cup, as well as the 1998 FIFA World Cup and the 2007 Rugby World Cup final. Two UEFA Champions League finals in the current century have also been played in the Stade de France, the 2000 and 2006. Paris has most recently been the host for UEFA Euro 2016, both at the Parc des Princes in the city proper and also at Stade de France, with the latter hosting the opening match and final, and will reprise its role for the 2022 final. The final stage of the most famous bicycle racing in the world, Tour de France, always finishes in Paris. Since 1975, the race has finished on the Champs Elysees. Tennis is another popular sport in Paris and throughout France. The French Open, held every year on the red clay of the Roland Garros National Tennis Centre, is one of the four Grand Slam events of the World Professional Tennis Tour. The 17,000-seat Bercy Arena is the venue for the annual Paris Masters ATP Tour Tennis Tournament, and has been a frequent site of national and international tournaments in basketball, boxing, cycling, handball, ice hockey, show jumping and other sports. The Bercy Arena also hosted the 2017 EF World Ice Hockey Championship, together with Cologne, Germany. 
The final stages of the FIBA Eurobasket 1951 and Eurobasket 1999 were also played in Paris, the latter at the Palais Omnisports de Paris Bercy. The basketball team Levelois Metropolitans plays some of its games at the 4000 capacity Stade Pierre de Coubertin. Another top level professional team, Nanterre 92, plays in Nanterre. Chapter 12 Infrastructure Chapter 12 Section 1 Transport Paris is a major rail, highway, and air transport hub. Ile de France Mobilites, formerly the Syndicat des Transports d'Ile de France and before that the Syndicat des Transports Paysion, oversees the transit network in the region. The Syndicat coordinates public transport and contracts it out to the RATP the SNCF and the Octal Consortium of Private Operators Managing 1,176 Bus Lines. According to a 2018 INSEE survey, a large majority of Parisians use public transport to get to work. Only 10.6% commuted to work by automobile. 10.5% walked or used roller skates, 5.5% commuted by bicycle, and 4.4% commuted by motorbike. Bike lanes are being doubled while electric car incentives are being created. The French capital is banning the most polluting automobiles from key districts. Chapter 12 Section 1 Subsection 2 Railways A central hub of the national rail network, Paris's six major railway stations and a minor one are connected to three networks, the TGV serving four high-speed rail lines, the normal speed Corail trains, and the suburban rails. Chapter 12 Section 1 Subsection 3 Metro, Rurand Tramway Since the inauguration of its first line in 1900, Paris's metro network has grown to become the city's most widely used local transport system, today it carries about 5.23 million passengers daily through 16 lines, 303 stations and 220 kilometers of rails. Superimposed on this is a regional express network, the Ruhr, whose five lines, 257 stops and 587 kilometers of rails connect Paris to more distant parts of the urban area. Over 26.5 billion euros will be invested over the next 15 years to extend the metro network into the suburbs, with notably the Grand Paris Express project. In addition, the Paris region is served by a light rail network of nine lines, the tramway, Line T1 runs from osnier genevilliers to noisy le sec Line T2 runs from pont de Bezens to Port de Versailles. Line T runs from pont du Garigliano to Port de Vincennes. Line Teb runs from Port de Vincennes to Port d'Osnier. Line T5 runs from Saint-Denis to garges sarcelles Line T6 runs from Châtelain to Viroflé. Line T7 runs from Villejuif to Atis Mons. Line T8 runs from Saint-Denis to epinay sur seine and Villetneurs all of which are operated by the RAT Group, and Line T4 runs from Bandera to Ornesu Bois, which is operated by the state rail carrier SNCF. Five new light rail lines are currently in various stages of development. Chapter 12 Section 1 Subsection 4 Air Paris is a major international air transport hub with the fifth busiest airport system in the world. The city is served by three commercial international airports, Paris Charles de Gaulle, Paris Orly and Beauvais T Airport. Together these three airports recorded traffic of 96.5 million passengers in 2014. There is also one general aviation airport, Paris Le Bourget, historically the oldest Parisian airport and closest to the city centre, which is now used only for private business flights and air shows. Orly Airport located in the southern suburbs of Paris, replaced Le Bourget as the principal airport of Paris from the 1950s to the 1980s. Charles de Gaulle Airport, located on the edge of the northern suburbs of Paris, opened to commercial traffic in 1974 and became the busiest Parisian airport in 1993. For the year 2017 it was the fifth busiest airport in the world by international traffic, and it is the hub for the nation's flag carrier Air France. Beauvais T Airport, located 69 km north of Paris's city centre, is used by charter airlines and low-cost carriers such as Ryanair. 
Domestically, air travel between Paris and some of France's largest cities such as Lyon, Marseille, or Strasbourg has been in a large measure replaced by high-speed rail due to the opening of several high-speed TGV rail lines from the 1980s. For example, after the LGV Mediterranée opened in 2001, air traffic between Paris and Marseille declined from 2,976,793 passengers in 2000, to 1,502,196 passengers in 2014. After the LGV Est opened in 2007, air traffic between Paris and Strasbourg declined from 1,006,327 passengers in 2006 to 157,207 passengers in 2014. Internationally, air traffic has increased markedly in recent years between Paris and the Gulf airports. The emerging nations of Africa, Russia, Turkey, Portugal, Italy, and mainland China, whereas noticeable decline has been recorded between Paris and the British Isles, Egypt, Tunisia, and Japan. Chapter 12 Section 1 Subsection 5 Motorways The city is also the most important hub of France's motorway network, and is surrounded by three orbital freeways, the Peripherique, which follows the approximate path of 19th-century fortifications around Paris, the A86 motorway in the inner suburbs, and finally the Francilienne motorway in the outer suburbs. Paris has an extensive road network with over 2,000 kilometers of highways and motorways. Chapter 12 Section 1 Subsection 6 Waterways The Paris region is the most active water transport area in France, with most of the cargo handled by ports of Paris in facilities located around Paris. The rivers Loire, Rhine, Rhône, Meuse, and Skelt can be reached by canals connecting with the Seine, which include the Canal Saint-Martin, Canal Saint-Denis, and the Canal de Luc. Chapter 12 Section 1 Subsection 7 Cycling There are 440 kilometers of cycle paths and routes in Paris. These include piste cyclable and band cyclable. Some 29 kilometers of specially marked bus lanes are free to be used by cyclists, with a protective barrier protecting against encroachments from vehicles. Cyclists have also been given the right to ride in both directions on certain one-way streets. Paris offers a bike-sharing system called Valib with more than 20,000 public bicycles distributed at 1,800 parking stations, which can be rented for short and medium distances including one-way trips. Chapter 12 Section 2 Electricity Electricity is provided to Paris through a peripheral grid fed by multiple sources. In 2012, around 50% of electricity generated in the Ile de France came from cogeneration energy plants located near the outer limits of the region. Other energy sources included thermal power, waste incineration, methane gas, hydraulics, solar power, and a negligible amount of wind power. A quarter of the city's district heating is to come from a plant in saint wen sur seine burning a 50-50 mix of coal and 140,000 tons of wood pellets from the United States per year. Chapter 12 Section 3, Water and Sanitation Paris in its early history had only the rivers Seine and Bievre for water. From 1809, the Canal de Loc provided Paris with water from less polluted rivers to the northeast of the capital. From 1857, the civil engineer Eugene Belgrand, under Napoleon III, oversaw the construction of a series of new aqueducts that brought water from locations all around the city to several reservoirs built atop the capital's highest points of elevation. From then on, the new reservoir system became Paris's principal source of drinking water, and the remains of the old system, pumped into lower levels of the same reservoirs, were from then on used for the cleaning of Paris's streets. This system, is still a major part of Paris's modern water supply network. Today Paris has more than 2,400 kilometers of underground passageways dedicated to the evacuation of Paris's liquid wastes. In 1982, Mayor Chirac introduced the motorcycle-mounted motocrop to remove dog feces from Paris streets. The project was abandoned in 2002 for a new and better enforced local law, 
under the terms of which dog owners can be fined up to 500 euros for not removing their dog feces. The air pollution in Paris, from the point of view of particulate matter, is the highest in France with 38 G slash M3. Chapter 12 Section 4, Parks and Gardens Paris today has more than 421 municipal parks and gardens, covering more than 3,000 hectares and containing more than 250,000 trees. Two of Paris's oldest and most famous gardens are the Tuileries Garden, and the Luxembourg Garden, for the Luxembourg Palace, built for Marie de Medici in 1612, which today houses the Senate. The Jardin des Plantes was the first botanical garden in Paris, created in 1626 by Louis XIII as Dr. Guy de la Brosse for the cultivation of medicinal plant stock between 1853 and 1870, Emperor Napoleon III and the city's first director of parks and gardens, Jean Charles Adolphe Alphand, created the Bois de Boulogne, Bois de Vincennes, Parc Montserrat and Parc des Buttes Chaumont, located at the four points of the compass around the city, as well as many smaller parks, squares and gardens in the Paris's quarters. Since 1977, the city has created 166 new parks, most notably the Parc de la Villette, Parc André Citroën, Parc de Bercy and Parc Clichy Batignolles. One of the newest parks, the Promenade des Burges de la Seine, built on a former highway on the left bank of the Seine between the Pont de l'Alma and the Musée d'Ausay, has floating gardens and gives a view of the city's landmarks. Weekly park runs take place in the Bois de Boulogne and the Parc Montserrat. Chapter 12 Section 5, Cemeteries During the Roman era, the city's main cemetery was located to the outskirts of the left bank settlement, but this changed with the rise of Catholic Christianity, where most every inner city church had adjoining burial grounds for use by their parishes. With Paris's growth many of these, particularly the city's largest cemetery, the Holy Innocents Cemetery, were filled to overflowing, creating quite unsanitary conditions for the capital. When inner city burials were condemned from 1786, the contents of all Paris's parish cemeteries were transferred to a renovated section of Paris's stone mines outside the Port d'Enfer city gate, today placed on Fair Rocherot in the 14th arrondissement. The process of moving bones from the Cimetière des Innocents to the catacombs took place between 1786 and 1814, part of the network of tunnels and remains can be visited today on the official tour of the catacombs. After a tentative creation of several smaller suburban cemeteries, the prefect Nicolas Frocotte under Napoleon Bonaparte provided a more definitive solution in the creation of three massive Parisian cemeteries outside the city limits. Open from 1804, these were the cemeteries of Père Lachaise, Montmartre, Montparnasse, and later Passy. These cemeteries became in a city once again when Paris annexed all neighboring communes to the inside of its much larger ring of suburban fortifications in 1860. New suburban cemeteries were created in the early 20th century, the largest of these are the Cimetière Parisien de Saint-Ouen, the Cimetière Parisien de Pantin, the Cimetière Parisien d'Ivry, and the Cimetière Parisien de Bagneau. Some of the most famous people in the world are buried in Parisian cemeteries, such as Oscar Wilde, Frédéric Chopin, Jim Morrison, Edith Piaf and Serge Gainsbourg among others. Chapter 12 Section 6, Healthcare Health care and emergency medical service in the city of Paris and its suburbs are provided by the Assistance Publique, Hôpital de Paris, a public hospital system that employs more than 90,000 people in 44 hospitals. It is the largest hospital system in Europe. It provides health care, teaching, research, prevention, education and emergency medical service in 52 branches of medicine. The hospitals receive more than 5.8 million annual patient visits. One of the most notable hospitals is the Hotel Dieu, founded in 651, the oldest hospital in the city, although the current building is the product of a reconstruction of 1877. Other hospitals include Pitié Salpetriere Hospital, Hôpital Cochin, Bichard Claude Bernard Hospital, Hôpital European Georges Pompidou, Bicetra Hospital, Boujon Hospital, the Curie Institute, Lariboisier Hospital, Necker Enfant Molada Hospital, Hôpital Saint Louis, Hôpital de la Charité, and the American Hospital of Paris. 
Chapter 13, Media Paris and its close suburbs is home to numerous newspapers, magazines and publications including Le Monde, Le Figaro, Liberation, Le Nouvel Observateur, Le Canard des Chenets, La Croix, Pariscope, Le Parisien, Les Echos, Paris Match, Réseau and Telecoms, Reuters France, and L'Official des Spectacles. France's two most prestigious newspapers, Le Monde and Le Figaro, are the centerpieces of the Parisian publishing industry. Agence France Press is France's oldest, and one of the world's oldest, continually operating news agencies. AFP, as it is colloquially abbreviated, maintains its headquarters in Paris, as it has since 1835. France 24 is a television news channel owned and operated by the French government, and is based in Paris. Another news agency is France Diplomatie, owned and operated by the Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs, and pertains solely to diplomatic news and occurrences. The most viewed network in France, TF1, is in nearby Boulogne Billancourt. France 2, France 3, Canal Plus, France 5, M6, Arta, D8, W9, NT1, NRG12, La Chaine Parlementaire, France 4, BFM TV, and Gouli are other stations located in and around the capital. Radio France, France's public radio broadcaster, and its various channels, is headquartered in Paris's 16th arrondissement. Radio France Internationale, another public broadcaster is also based in the city. Paris also holds the headquarters of the La Poste, France's national postal carrier. Chapter 14, International Relations Chapter 14 Section 1, Twin Towns, Sister Cities Since the 9th of April 1956, Paris is exclusively and reciprocally twinned only with Rome, 1956 Au Paris Est, Digne de Rome, Sol Rome Est, Digne de Paris Solo Parigi Degna di Roma, Solo Roma e Degna di Parigi only Paris is worthy of Rome, only Rome is worthy of Paris. Chapter 14 Section 2 Other Relationships Paris has agreements of friendship and cooperation with Chapter 14 Section 3 Sources 